Hello guys and girls, Jan here. I'd like to welcome you to my latest video. Today we're going to build the cool looking binary clock that you just saw. As this video was going to be a little bit too long, I made a second one where you can see all the features of this clock in greater detail and learn how to read binary. So make sure to also watch that if you haven't already. Let us take a look at the components that we're going to be using in today's project. Starting off with the electronics, we've got an Arduino Nano, a DS1307 real-time clock module, a 1K, a 4.7K and a 10K resistor, a few male header pins as well as 90 degree angled female header pins, 18 individually addressable RGB LEDs on a strip of 60 LEDs per meter, those are based on the chip WS2812, a DS18B20 digital temperature sensor, a light dependent resistor, four touch button modules, an NPN transistor, as well as a small speaker or buzzer. Some non insulated wire, I'm going to go with jewelry wire or silver wire, flexible insulated wires, as well as a PCB with 24 by 18 holes that is 5 by 7 centimeters, and last but not least, a 90 degree mini USB adapter. We are also going to be using a sheet of aluminium. 2mm MDF, some milky acrylic as well as some clear acrylic, vinyl wrap, 28 M4 nuts, 4 self-securing M4 nuts, flange head screws that can be secured with an allen wrench, we need 4 of them that need to be 45mm long and also M4, 32 M4 metal washers, 4 15mm M3 PCB standoffs as well as 8 M3 screws, 4 of which should be at least 6mm long as well as some double sided tape. Tools for this project include a cutting knife and a precision cutting knife, a wire cutter, an M4 crescent wrench, a file, a screwdriver with suitable allen and phillips bits, a soldering iron, a coping saw, a pair of middle cutting scissors which I forgot to add to this shot, a power drill with 3.5mm and 4.5mm drill bits and every maker's favorite tool, a hot glue gun. A list with links to most of the items can also be found in the video description and over on the Instructables page. This time I will also include a few Amazon affiliate links next to my regular eBay links. By using those links you can support my channel while shopping for your next project. Without any further ado, let's start building this project. The clock consists of different panels that are held together by the screws on all four corners. We're going to start by cutting the front panel to size. First, we mark where we want our cuts to go while keeping in mind that we want a little bit of tolerance to later sand the edges. Then we simply scrape the acrylic with a cutting knife. After 10 to 20 times, we have a groove. We place that groove on the edge of a table and break the acrylic. After the front panel is cut to size, we go on to cut the back panel out of a piece of MDF. We can use our coping saw for this, but a cutting knife does also work. We just have to clamp the MDF onto a scrap piece of wood and scrape it with a cutting knife until we have two individual pieces. Now we sandwich the two panels together and sand each side to perfectly align. After this is done, we cut out our first template and put it onto the two panels using some tape. First we drill a 4.5mm hole into each of the four corners. As the acrylic is very brittle and we don't want it to break, we will start with a small drill bit and work our way up until we reach the desired hole diameter. Then we use the template to sand the corners until they have the right shape. For now we can put the front panel aside and stick the second template onto the back panel where we need to use a 3.5mm drill bit to drill the holes for our four PCB standoffs, as well as four holes that mark the edges of our little back window. We then use our coping saw to cut the window out and finish the edges using a file. You also don't want to forget to drill the hole for the mini USB cable, which should be right here. As we are now finished cutting the back panel, we can proceed to wrap it in vinyl wrap. We simply cut two pieces to the right size and apply the first one to one side. Then we cut the rims away and free the window. A hair dryer can help to make the holes visible again, so we can also cut them out. After doing the same thing for the other side, we use our next template to make a little acrylic window for the opening. Now we come to the highlight of this project, in the most literal sense, the LED panel. 
We use our metal cutting scissors to cut a 12.2 by 8 cm piece out of a sheet of metal. Be careful while doing so, because the metal cutting scissors create very sharp edges. We are going to smooth those with our file and some sandpaper. Then we add our next template to drill the holes for the screws and the wires. We once again also use the template to get the edges right. Time to prepare the actual LEDs. First we cut them into 3 strips of 6 LEDs each. Some of the LED strips come with very thin adhesive or no adhesive at all. So we are going to stick our strips onto a piece of double sided tape and cut it to size with a precision knife. This will make it stick to the metal plate and, although it is not a very professional solution, will insulate the copper pads from the metal surface underneath. Before we actually stick the strips onto the panel, we clean it with alcohol. While we attach the LEDs, we have to make sure that we put them down in the right place, as well as in the right direction. The little arrows on the LED strips indicate the direction in which data travels through the strip. Our data line comes from the top left corner of the panel, goes through the first strip all the way to the right side, then back to the beginning of the following strip, on the left, and so on. So all of our arrows have to be pointing to the right. Let's heat up our soldering iron and put some tin onto the copper pads as well as onto our wire. The data lines are connected as I just described, while we simply hook up the plus and the minus pads of the strip in parallel. After the strips are wired up, we use a knife to carefully lift the ends of each strip while holding the LEDs down. Then we put some hot glue underneath to insulate our soldering joints. After this is done, we add a few header pins to the wires that go to the Arduino. To make really sure that the metal plate is not shorting anything, we use a multimeter to measure the resistance between all of the pins. Everything seems fine here, so we are ready to test it. If we put our LED panel right behind the milky acrylic, it can become quite tricky to tell individual LEDs apart, which would make our clock even harder to read than it already is. To solve this issue, we are going to make ourselves a little light guide out of MDF. For this, we simply cut out a piece that has the same size as the front panel. Then we add yet another template to it and drill 18 3.5mm holes for the LEDs, as well as 4 for the screws, into it. We then clamp it down to the front panel and use some sandpaper to align the two. Now we can quite easily tell each individual bit apart. The last enclosure component that we are going to make is the button frame. We once again cut a piece of MDF to the right size and add a template to it. Then we drill all the necessary holes and use a coping saw to cut out the middle section. Our frame is supposed to hold the four touch buttons, the light sensor and also a little speaker in place. Before we can attach them onto the frame, we cut a couple of smaller cover pieces out of MDF. We then hot glue the components onto the panels and add wires to them. The touch button's power pads are hooked up in parallel, while each output line gets an individual wire. This is also a good moment to test if they are all working. As the light sensor needs 5 volts on one side, we can simply hook it up to the alarm button's VCC pad and solder a wire to the other leg. After the components are prepared, we cut a little bit into the sides of the frame to make room for them and their wires. Then we remove the wood dust from all of the pieces and cover them in vinyl wrap. We use the precision knife to remove pieces of the vinyl wrap directly above the sensitive areas of our touch modules. With some double sided tape, we can then attach our own buttons to the MDF. I made my buttons out of rubber foam, which gives them a nice soft texture, but you can use any other non-metallic material that you want. We use a knife to free a little bit of the MDF again, which gives us a grippy surface for the hot glue. Let us leave the frame as it is right now and move on to the PCB. You can find circuit diagram as well as a layout plan in the video description and on the instructor builds page of the project, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about that in the video. 
We start by placing the components with the lowest profile on the circuit board. The smallest components are the wire bridges, which I remembered a little bit too late, so I started with the resistors instead. We solder our components in place and go on with the next highest set of components. Transistors have to be bent to the right shape with a pair of pliers in order to fit the hole spacing of the PCB. We first solder one of their legs, then turn the PCB around and reheat the soldering joint. We can then use a finger to properly position the component. Now we can solder the other two legs in place. Next up we have our female header pins. To save some space and be able to plug our electronics in from the side, we are going to mount them in a 90 degree angle. For this we can either use some normal header pins and bend the legs to a 90 degree angle to solder them in from the top side of the PCB. This is not ideal as it can put quite some mechanical stresses onto the short links. So I'm going to hook you up with a link to a couple of angled contacts with longer legs. Then we can solder our Arduino and our real-time clock module in place. We only need to solder the Arduino pins in place that are actually relevant for the circuit. That was also the moment when I recognized that I forgot something, so I quickly soldered the insulated wire bridges in place while holding them with a pair of pliers. With the real-time clock module, we are only going to equip the side that has 7 pads with header pins, as it does not fit the whole spacing of the PCB. We furthermore place some tape underneath it to prevent any short circuits. As all of our components are soldered in place, it is now time to make the connections on the other side of the board. For this, we are going to use our non-insulated wire. A pair of pliers can be used to straighten it, then we cut it into smaller pieces and solder it onto the PCB. To make a connection, we heat up our soldering joint and insert the wire. We then keep the soldering iron on it to heat it up until the solder encloses it completely. And we get a joint that looks like this one. If we don't heat up the wire enough, we might end up with a cold joint, which looks similar to this one and does not conduct. We can use our wire cutter to hold the wire down while soldering and make sure that it is laying flat on the PCB. On longer connection paths, we solder it to a single PCB every 5 to 6 holes until we reach a corner or the next component. In a corner, we cut the wire above the pad and solder the end to it. We then take a new piece of wire and go on from there. Making those blank wire connections can be quite tricky and take some skill. So if you're doing this for the first time, it is definitely not a bad idea to practice on a scrap piece of PCB before attempting to do it on the real one. After we are done soldering, we check the connections again and make sure that we did not short anything. Then we put the PCB inside the button frame and use it as a reference for the necessary wire lengths. We then cut the wires to the right length and add male henna pins to them. After this I went back to the front panel and carefully applied a sticker as a final touch. I made it out of transparent laser printer foil and even though I applied it really carefully I was unable to get a bubble free result, which is unfortunately visible upon closer inspection. The foil does also not stick to the corners very well, so I cannot recommend this solution. It could probably be done with a better sticker or, if you are good at drawing, you could add the numbers with a sharpie. Now we have all of our components and can assemble our clock. We start by putting the light guide and the front panel together. After all four bolts are in, we align the two panels and tighten the nuts. A couple of nuts later comes the light panel, where we have to take a look at the right direction. The cable should be at the top of the panel. The third piece is the button frame. Keep in mind that when looking at the front of the clock, its speaker should be on the right side. Pull the cable off your LED panel through the middle of the frame before you fix it in place. For now we put the front assembly aside and move on to the back panel. Here you can also see my beautiful handcrafted 90 degree mini USB adapter. I'll link your proper adapter in the description so you don't have to deal with this kind of mess. You can simply plug the adapter in and run the cable through a hole in the back panel. We take our M3 screws and our PCB spacers to fix the little window. We carefully tighten the screws as we don't want to damage our acrylic. Then we take our PCB, plug in our adapter and screw it onto the spacers. The component side should be facing the window while the Arduino's USB port faces the bottom of the clock. Then we plug all of our connectors in while keeping their polarities in mind and carefully squeeze all the wires into the clock. 
We can then close it up with the back panel and tighten the four remaining nuts. The end result should look like this, with one washer on every side of each panel, while the light guide is placed directly behind the front panel. We have one nut between the light guide and the LED panel and two more separating it from the button frame. As I used short bolts with a length of only 40mm, I only have three nuts keeping the back panel and the frame apart. With the 45mm bolts that should normally be used, you would add another nut here as well as one or two extra washers. At the end we have a lock nut so that everything stays in place. Time to upload some code. We download the code package that is also in the video description and unzip it. Then we open our Arduino libraries folder and drop all the libraries from the code package into it. Then we open the light sensor calibration sketch which will get us the bright and dark values for the clock's internal dimmer. We upload it, open the serial monitor and follow the instructions on screen. After that is done, we open the binary clock's actual code and replace the two values that we just got with the ones that are already in the code. We close all other windows, upload the code to our clock and we are done. Time to play around with our new gadget. All of its features as well as a little guide on reading binary can be found in my second video that I mentioned in the beginning. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. For this project it took me a lot more time planning and programming than I originally thought. Not to mention the week that it took me to make this video. Hopefully it was worth it and I could give you a great idea for your next weekend project. I'd be happy to hear what you think about it in the comments. Furthermore, I'd like to mention that this project is also an entry in the LED contest as well as in the Arduino contest over on Instructables. So if you think it is price worthy, you can vote for me. If you stuck around for this long, I'd like to thank you very much for watching, have a nice day and I hope to see you next time.